Making fish feet is not as easy as it sounds. The fish can be quite fussy, but the good thing is, my customers cannot scold me if they don't like my food. Hi, I'm Yi Hang. I've been with the team for more than 10 years. I am looking at finding better ways to utilize food waste, also known as sterilization. Currently, I'm focusing on converting food waste into fish feed for our fish farms. Food waste here doesn't mean the leftovers after eating. We are referring to the pre-consumer food waste that is usually generated from food production or food preparation. One example here is leftovers from the production of tofu or soy milk, also known as okara. Typically, this is being disposed or converted to fertilizers. There's still nutrition left from these uh, byproducts and we are trying to convert it into fish feed. The whole reason of us doing this is for sustainability. Singapore has a 30 by 30 goal, which is to increase the capacity and capability to achieve 30% of our nutrition needs by 2030. Increasing the productivity of our local fish farms is one way to achieve this. But currently, our main source of fish feed are from overseas imports. If we want to strengthen our food security and have more sustainable fish farms, then we need to develop our own sustainable source of fish feed. Having control over the formula of the feed also means we can increase the nutritional content to make our fish grow faster and healthier. First, we look at uh, identifying the potential raw materials such as okara or the spank grains from beer brewing, byproducts from chicken slaughterhouse such as the chicken guts. How gross is it to deal with this? So let's just say the smell is unforgettable. We will get used to it after some time. So after that, we will convert these raw materials into pellets at our lab and then we can feed it to the fish to test the efficacy. We can do this at our feed nutrition facility or we can also do it at the farms. We know that the feed is effective based on the fish physical growth and its overall health. So some fish can be quite picky. It's not as straightforward as just tossing some feed into the water. For example, sea bass, they are quite picky eaters because they are carnivorous in nature. They require a lot more protein in their diet. So the biggest challenge uh, in my work is that this is a relatively new research area for Singapore. We are still exploring and figuring things out. We are also constantly uh, being creative with our solutions. So one example is that uh, when we first started making feed for our fish, we realised that our sea bass is not taking in the feed that we make. Sea bass in the wild actually consumes fish, so they like the fishy smell. Once we add that back into the feed, then uh, the fish starts to consume our feed. When I was studying food science, I didn't expect to be working on things that people don't want rather than things that they do. And I definitely did not expect to work on food for fish. It is a very fun and interesting experience for me and I feel a sense of accomplishment from it. Not only are we providing a sustainable food source, we get to challenge their expectations on where exactly our food comes from.